So what the fuck happened to your name, you might be thinking. You all good? Uh, well, I am all good. I'm one of the goodest people. I think I'd give myself an 8 out of 10. But if you're asking if I'm feeling good, then some things have changed. First of all, uh, I'm no longer seven people. We've all merged. We're all one coherent super person now. And I really feel like the end result is the best of all of us. I feel like it was a positive change. I've gained a lot. I'm pretty much perfectly at peace with who I am and expressing myself and where I want to go in life. It, it all turned out really well, honestly. Physically, things still aren't great. I'm still not sure what this disease is that I'm dealing with that's, that's causing blood to come out of my butt on occasion. But, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Just got to keep living. And my name? It's, it's just my name now. Short for Adorable Love Star, and everybody's just got to deal with that now. You can call me Addy for short. The only reason my name isn't legally changed to Addy or Adorable is because that costs money. Did you you know how much money that costs? And you have to like, you have to like be heard. You have to give reasons for why you want your name changed. We live in a weird, weird country. These United States. It may be even weirder in other countries. Oh, and before I forget to mention, I am still depressed. Merging did not magically cure my depression. I've had a few people ask that. It's kind of weird that they did. Like, I, I feel better about who I am, but no, that doesn't make the depression just disappear. So I, I'm letting you know that no, it didn't. And the hardest thing to deal with upon becoming a super person has been time management. Like, I have more time now, but that just means it's necessary to better schedule that time. Make sure I have room for everything, especially the people in my life. And, you know... Then you got to think about this channel. I, I was really thinking about what, what I'm supposed to do about this channel. Because even though I still love video games and talking about their design so much, I'm not, I'm not savvy. Well, I am savvy. I'm, I'm a big, big savvy and a big everyone else. But the one-seventh of me who was savvy, who was doing this before has different opinions than I do. And they express themselves differently. Like, I'm trying I'm trying to no longer do sarcastic humor because I realize that a lot of people can't tell. A lot of people seem to have issues telling when I'm being serious or not. So I'm just trying not to do sarcastic humor anymore. And with my schedule, it's actually become kind of hard to upload anything to the channel, and I was wondering whether that meant that I had to stop doing the channel altogether. I don't think that's what it means. I think that just means I get to upload what I want without worrying about the brand anymore. Like, who is going to stop me from uploading a 90-minute video about my current mental state while Sonic Boom plays in the background, and I sometimes talk about Sonic Boom itself? Who's going to stop me? It's called YouTube. And just like Savvy, I do believe that some things need talked about. Because if they aren't brought up, if they aren't normalized, then the people with these problems are going to continue to feel ostracized in society. And I have the emotional strength to talk about vulnerable things in public. And people can't really hurt me. I can't really be hurt by people being asses on the internet. It just doesn't happen anymore very there are some very uh notable exceptions to that if they're like super close friends or something but anyone that close i probably have met in real life at some point but yes a uh, time time is the greatest enemy of all there's just not enough time to do all the things i would like to do I mean, th there might be if my if my schedule were perfect. I'm working on it. But as of right now, there is not enough time to do all the things I would like to do. And it's, uh, it's, it's, help it's help helpful and hopeful that the job I do, uploading long plays, is something I can do during the pandemic, even though lots of places are reopening that maybe shouldn't be. 
and the schedule I'm making once I work out the kinks will hopefully last a while. Ironically, uh, and unfortunately, I'm actually off schedule by recording this video. I have Sunday as the day dedicated to deal with my hobbies like this, and this is Monday. But the thing I planned for Monday at 5 p.m. didn't work out, so I have time for this right now. And I still think it's important that I find a way to express myself, express my existence, and express my love for the things I love. The things I love, like Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric, available exclusively on the Nintendo Wii U, I think. I think it's still exclusive to the Wii U. I know Lost World got a PC port. I don't think Sonic Boom did, though. It should have. I know they didn't want to give it a port or acknowledge it in any way after it bombed, but... It needs to be on a console where more people can play it. I love the Wii U. The Wii U is my favorite console, but... You know, maybe if more people played Sonic Boom, then they would realize it's really not all that bad. Most, most of the time, it's like dead average. It really feels like tone-wise tone and structure-wise, it feels like a PS2 action platformer. It feels a lot like it was meant to be more open than it is also, but I'm going to assume Sega uh, meddled with that, and that's why it's more linear than, than it feels like it's meant to be. Oh, here's some good dialogue. Actually, I like the writing in the first half of the game for the most part. Let's listen. The mine collapsed! The miners are trapped! Can you help me save them? Please save them! Okay there, fella, calm down. We are heroes, so obviously we can and will help. We're a pretty big deal. Thank you, thank you, thank you! So Knuckles is my favorite character for the first half of the game writing-wise. He's a little ditzy, but he has other things going on. Like, you might think from that exchange that his thing is being egotistical, but it's not. Like, for the first half of the game, all the characters except for Tails are written in such a way that they have multiple personality traits and act kind of like people. A little cartoony for real people, but... They kind of act like people. They have more going on than just their one thing. But then in, like, the later half of the game, everyone gets boiled down to their most basic elements. Like, Knuckles just becomes an idiot, and everybody makes fun of him for being an idiot. I don't know why the writing gets so much worse in the second half. Amy gets almost nothing to say in the second half, really. Which is unfortunate. There's, like, two levels in the game where you get Knuckles and Amy by themselves, and I love the first time that happens. It's actually my favorite level the first time that happens. Oh, yeah, I suppose I should talk more about like that. No, I want to talk about this first, this section. So occasionally in the game, there are 2D sections, which are like mini Metroidvanias. They're little labyrinths that aren't quite the size of like a regular Metroidvania map with lots of directions to go, shortcuts to unlock, and collectibles, and you can explore them with either of the characters you're given. Like, you can traverse all this stuff as Amy or as Knuckles. I prefer Knuckles just because I really like his wall climbing gimmick a whole lot. But yeah, this is really cool. There's like two layers to this. There's the frontward layer, which we're on right now, and there's the background layer, and you switch between the layers with these zip wires, and each have their own collectibles, and the overarching goal is to rescue four miners. But you can also explore if you want, which I do want. Like, it's, it's hard for me to see what's wrong with, like, this section, per se. I get why people have issues with many things in Sonic Boom. But if you were just to take some sections of it in a vacuum, like this one, what's wrong with uh, what's wrong with this section, where you're exploring the labyrinth and finding the miners? It seems fine to me. It's functional. It let lets you use either character to explore, so that way you get used to their movement. I yeah, I just like it. I like it a lot. I wish there were more of these sections in the game. There's a few more, but not nearly as many as as you might think. Sometimes the game turns to 2D and you get cool Metroidvania bits. It's nice. Anyway, about the channel in general. You might have noticed that there's a lot of Let's Plays that have been the opposite of finished lately. And that's also schedule related and because I don't have the energy and drive to do entire Let's Plays the way I used to. I know it's unfortunate. But I, I don't want to keep lying to myself and say that I do have the drive to do that when I don't. So how, how it's going to go 
is I'm just gonna upload whatever I feel like uploading because it's it's my channel. Playable Passion was a brand. It was not like a, a super corporate brand or anything, obviously. I had 3,000 subscribers, but it was a brand and it had a focus. The brand's gone now. I'm, I'm Addy, I like video games, and I like a lot of other stuff too. And this is my YouTube channel, so whatever goes on here goes on here. I also really like the combat in this game. You can't fail the combat. This this game, Rise of Lyric, actually has a lot in common with the Lego games, and that you can't really fail in anything. And by that I mean there's usually not a failure state. If you die in combat, you just respawn immediately back in the combat, with all of the enemies still dead that you already killed. So that's very Lego. You lose some of your currency, which is robot scrap, also really Lego. If you die while platforming, you just respawn on the ledge you fell off of. The only time you ever get sent back to a checkpoint if you die is if you die during a speed section, which you haven't seen yet. Speaking of currency and robot scrap, and what, oh, first I should probably talk about the power glyphs because this guy's about to give us one. You get power glyphs from helping people. There are nine people to help in total. The power glyphs are upgrades, mostly for combat purposes. They're noticeable upgrades, but they're not like incredibly noticeable upgrades. It's not like the game is hard. It's an easy game meant to be approachable for all audiences, which is another thing that reminds me of LEGO in this game. In addition to the co-op, in addition to the combat, in addition to the 3D platforming, it all feels very LEGO. It feels like they were trying to make a 3D action platformer similar to the kind you'd get in the PS2 era, like Jack and Daxter and whatnot. But it comes across as more LEGO than that. Anyway, the robot scrap, as I was saying, you can use it in the open world to build things. And the things you build are platforming bits. You just build new platforming bits. That's kind of cool. I want more platforming. I signed up to platform in a 3D platformer. So I get more platforming by playing the game well? Yes, please. At least that's kind of how it's supposed to go, I think. Like, you buzzed open these chests, you get robot scrap. But the thing is that you're always going to have enough robot sc scrap, even if you don't actively look for the chests. So searching for the chests is something you do just because you like exploring. It's not something you do because you want the robot scrap. Also, the second kind of collectible we've been getting, the robot... I called them robot. Uh, the, pretty, the pretty princess crowns we've been picking up, those... Those help you buy upgrades for your characters. The upgrades are not noticeable, unlike the power glyphs. You, those upgrades just... They're things like ring magnetism or bonuses for co-op play. They're not, it's hard to notice them. So this is the speed section. It's basically an on-rails runner type section. Not an endless runner, obviously. This is not endless, but it has the same controls. There are three lanes and you can switch between the lanes by pressing the right or left shoulder bumpers. You can also freely move using the analog stick, but switching between lanes with the shoulder bumpers is much easier. And there are multiple pathways in these speed sections. And all the pathways uh, lead to different outcomes, like different collectibles. Some of them lead to crowns, and, and some of them will just get you to the end faster. And the idea is that you replay them, so that way you can experience all the different paths. And there's some other things, like you can jump through little, uh, little blue things to make rings appear, so you can get your health back, rings being your health. It's just a really basic runner, is what I should say. I don't really need to explain what you're seeing here. It's just, if you've played a 3D runner before, that's what this is. And it feels like maybe this was forced in the game because it's Sonic. Like, I know Sonic doesn't regularly move fast in this game. I know that he doesn't. I don't need anyone to tell me. But, oh. Well, you know, that happens sometimes. In any game where you're going super fast, things like this can happen. It's not going to ruin my day or anything. I'm just going to die and restart the speed section. Because like I said, the speed sections are the only things that send you back to a checkpoint as far as I know. I could be wrong, but as far as I know, that is how it works. But yeah, it just, this doesn't really feel like it fits with the rest of the game. Most of the game 
is Lego-like gameplay, where you're platforming, solving easy environmental puzzles, and uh, using the gimmicks of all four characters to progress through a level, and sometimes there's combat to break it up, just like a just like a Lego game. But unlike uh, unlike other 3D platformers, and again, just like a Lego game, there's pretty much no way to fail. You can't really lose Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Even during boss fights, if you die, you just instantly respawn. It's kind of like Spider-Man Friend or Foe in that respect, which is also very similar to Lego. If someone were to ask me what I found most appealing about this game, I would probably say the platforming, especially the platforming you do as Sonic, Knuckles, and Amy. Tails doesn't really get many great platforming segments, which is surprising considering he can do the hover thing. You figure they'd use that a lot, but they don't, actually. Knuckles is my favorite to platform with, and it's a tie between Amy and Sonic, because I like Sonic's homing attack as a platforming tool, but his other platforming tools aren't all that interesting. But wall climbing with Knuckles, I could just do that forever. I don't know why, it's just really satisfying to me. Also, here's some context-specific dialogue about, about the biplane. There's a lot of context-sensitive dialogue in the actual levels, which we haven't entered yet, but almost no context-sensitive dialogue in the open world, which seems weird. One might say there's too much context-sensitive dialogue in the actual levels, and I'm inclined to agree, especially in the later half of the game. But I would love more context-specific dialogue in the open world bits, which is what we're doing right now. We're exploring the open world. We're on our way to a linear level, but we were exploring the open world, unlocking stuff, jumping around. That's what one does in a 3D platformer. This is, again, very similar to LEGO. There are very linear levels, and then you leave the levels, and spend your studs on things to do, or in this case, robot scrap instead of studs. And they're long levels. The levels in this game are pretty girthy. 15 to 40 minutes. Like, you never know which one you're going to get. Could be in for another 40 minute level, could be a, could be a breezy quick one. Also, this optional area is a great time to talk about something that's wrong with Sonic Boom, and that there are too many rings. You can only use rings for health. You can't buy anything with rings. Rings serve no secondary function, uh, function besides health, and they just flood you with them. And in a game where dying means nothing, unless you're trying to challenge yourself by not dying, there's no need to have rings littering the place. No need. Hello! I hope you are having a non-curse today. I am not. Do you mind if I tell you my story? Okay. I need your help. I need to fix a problem that has haunted my family for thousands of years. You see, a long time ago, we tried to improve our fertilizer formula. We screwed it up and turned all our crops into viny weeds that destroy every plant around it. I know people just can't go back in time, but if you find something the lyrics or the ancients that can reverse this curse, I would be eternally grateful. Will you think about it? I'm not sure if any of the ancients' machines will let you time travel, but we can look to see if anything they have helps. Anything you can do will help. I hope you find something in your future that will help my past. I love the objective that appears. Go back in time and find young Tucker, his ancestor from a thousand years ago. Just go back in time and do that. It kind of spoils that you're going to go back in time. I guess it wasn't that important to them. Them being the programmers or the writers, whoever was responsible for that little objective thing that appeared. So we're almost to my favorite level, the Abandoned Facility, but first we have to open this door by using our various character abilities similar to Lego. Sonic just sort of goes on this dynamo. And Amy's platforming gimmick is that she can triple jump and she can climb on pink beams that the other characters can't. She sort of sticks to them, and you might think that would erase the challenge, but later they find ways to make it challenging by adding hazards and making the beams much smaller. So you have to be more precise with your platforming. And now it's time for Tails' only two gimmicks. Tails can hover, and Tails can use his buddy bot. His buddy bot goes in tiny doorways and activates a thing. 
It's very Lego. Really. I thought people like Lego games. All right, follow me. Anyway, uh, so most linear levels that like we're about to enter one as soon as the, yeah, most linear levels start with a speed section before you get to the platforming. And this one almost does the same thing as all the others. But not quite. See, there's the speed section up ahead, but before we get to it, we get this little area to explore. And I love that. There's this little watery cave that you get to run around in just before the speed section. I personally don't really like the speed sections, so I like that there's just a little bit of exploring you can do before you're forced into the speed section. It's nice. But now we gotta go. And we're going to take the alternate path to get the pretty princess crown, which I will never use. Up we go. Neither collectible is really important. Like I said, even if you even if you don't actively search for the chests, you're going to have enough robot scrap to do the open world stuff. And the pretty princess crowns just give you upgrades that aren't really noticeable. But I still like to get the collectibles, because getting the collectibles requires exploration and platforming, which is what I'm here for. That's why that's why one buys Rise of Lyric is to 3D platform, because that's what it is. Like, that's what it was advertised as, that's what I wanted. And based on who worked on it and how they seemed to feel about the game, it could have turned out a lot worse. Like, the people who made this game clearly love 3D platformers and love doing what they do. I get the impression that it was rushed out, or that Sega messed with it a bit too much. Those are both things that Sega has been known to do. So, e either of those, or maybe both of them, seems likely. And now, we're at my favorite level proper. It is actually the first uh, real level, I'd say. Like, you get a tutorial level before you come here, and then you go to Cliff's Excavation Site, which is that open world hub we were at. This is the first real level. And, you know, I guess it's good that it's my favorite because it's right near the beginning of the game. I love the music here. I love the atmosphere. I love the, uh, the graphics. I know it's not a pretty looking game, but I think the mossy ruined temple thing it looks really good. I almost always love that whenever it appears. And there's a lot of Amy and Knuckles platforming in this level, like a lot. These tiny snake enemies only take one hit from Sonic's spin dash and they go down. Makes it really easy to pick them off. And yeah, this uh, light up floor tile puzzle, not really a puzzle. It's impossible to fail this, which I mean, even in Lego games, you can fail these light up puzzles. So maybe they should have made the light up puzzle a little harder in this game. You know, when even LEGO has a failure state for something that you don't, maybe your game's a little too easy for the demographic, but... But it's, it, it takes up a really small part of the level, so... Also, if you're wondering about the swingy thingies that we're, that we're swinging on... You know, oh, I love this room. I love this thing that games do where they pan over a huge platforming section and they're like, yeah, this is what you're here for, all the jumping. And I, lo yeah, I agree. That's why I am here. I'm, f I'm here for the jumping. I'm here to platform. So whenever I see one of those big panning shots where the game's like, I hope you're ready to jump, I'm always like, hell yes, why else would I be here? And there are two separate ways to get to the top. You can get to the top with Knuckles or with Amy. I prefer Knuckles. Anytime Knuckles is an option, I, I take him. I love the way these red gems look. I want them. I want to wear them. I want to put some on my wall. They're very pretty. They don't look as pretty in the other levels, probably because the lighting is brighter in the other levels. But I think they look beautiful in this lighting. But yeah, I just, I don't know, like things like this room, I can see how someone might be, well, this kind of platforming's been done thousands of times, or Th this isn't this isn't anything that that I would pay money for. I could just play an old an older game that does stuff like this. And I mean, I I guess I can see that, but the thing is that every game is a unique experience, right? 
I don't just want to replay ones I like over and over. I want to see new things. And if the new things are like old things that I like, I'm not going to complain about that, you know? And it's, it's not like there's a ton of options for this kind of 3D platforming anymore. The 3D platforming has made a comeback. There is no denying that. But this kind of PS2 era action focused 3D platforming with character gimmicks, it, it, it there's just not as much of that. Like this feels like a middle budget action platformer with a beat em up elements crawled out of the PS2 and then someone stuck some Lego mechanics on it. it it's not quite like any other 3D platformers I've played, you know? Even if the things it does have been done before, they're meshed together in a weird way. But I think every game is different and beautiful. So maybe I'm not the best person to judge such a thing. I feel like this game probably would have done better if, uh, if it weren't only released on the Wii U. Like, I think it sold around 500,000 copies, I think. It's been a while since I checked, which is not a lot for a Sonic game, but it, uh, it's, it seems pretty high given it was a Wii U exclusive, right? So I feel like if maybe this got released on systems that could have, for one thing, better handled it, like, this game seems like it was badly optimized for the Wii U. Uh, anyway, this chest right here, you're supposed to get it as Amy, but you can get it as Knuckles and still make your way back up because the ledge grab is very lenient. So you can just jump up places that normally only Amy can get to. I wouldn't call that a mark against the game or anything. Like, is the game being made worse because I can get that collectible as Knuckles? I don't think so. It's hard to imagine that children didn't love this game. These guys can shoot... You can dodge roll. You can dodge roll into their shots if you want. The dodge roll has a lot of invincibility frames. Like an absurd amount. You're just functionally invincible the entire time you're pressing the dodge roll button. As I was saying, uh, it's hard to imagine that children didn't enjoy this game. Like, I like the game now, but if I played it when I was a kid, I would have I would have been in love with it. I still do love it, but I would have loved it more, to the degree that I would have called myself in love with it, probably. But, you know, when you're a kid, things are simpler. Things are simpler, and you want simpler things. This would have been a new adventure with Sonic and company. It would have been co-op multiplayer, and I loved co-op multiplayer stuff. Having a brother and a sister, it, it made having co-op multiplayer really important. And there just weren't a lot of adventure games with co-op multiplayer. Like, I can't count the number of times I played Dragon Ball Z Sagas with my brother. Even after you defeat all the enemies, you do have to wait for this platform to rotate all the way around. And it seems like a bit of an oversight, given that since you're playing as Knuckles and Amy, and Knuckles is the strongest character, the enemies die pretty quick. Ding! Knuckles doesn't have the variety in moves that Sonic does, but he kills stuff quick. This room kind of feels weird to me because it feels like it was more meant for 2D. They don't make a lot of use of the 3D space with the idea of pushing back this wall. But I understand why it has to be 3D. Because the final part of the room is another one of these floor tile puzzles. Oh, and a new gimmick. You see these robot husks that I'm smashing? The snakes can climb in these husks and power them up. So if you destroy them before the snakes climb into them, then that's more enemies you don't have to fight. This mechanic actually comes back quite a few times, and I like it. I like that they place the husks around, so that way you can destroy them and prevent yourself from having to fight tougher enemies. Adds a, little bit of, adds a little bit of strategy to the combat. And there's already some room for strategy in the combat, with you having a dodge button, and the enemies all having very clearly telegraphed attacks. Even though death means nothing in this game and you can respawn immediately in combat, I still like to challenge myself by trying not to die. The option to be tryhard is fun. We just broke a weapon robot and got a weapon. I bet you didn't expect this game to have secondary weapons, but it does. This secondary weapon is a ring sack, and when we hit enemies with it, rings come out. 
And if we hit the enemy again while they're down, they die instantly. So you only need uh, you only need to get two good hits in on an enemy with the ring sack to put him down. Which is odd because it has an odd numbered odd numbered uh, odd numbered count on it. You can only swing it seven times instead of eight, even though you you would ideally want eight swings. So that way you can kill four enemies. This elevator section, also my favorite combat segment in the game, for sure. There's a decent variety in the enemies you fight. They give you two weapon robots to take secondary weaponry from. And it's short and simple. Like, it's just, it's just neat. The little, uh, the little robots hovering around take pot shots at you from the air, but you can just grab them. You can grapple them and throw them. They're not, yeah, like that. They're not hard to deal with. You don't have to be this try-hard. Trying it all is actually optional. You don't have to try it all to beat the game. I'm just electing to try. Also, to uh, anyone that takes umbrage with the video's title and is still here, uh, so somehow, if you're disappointed in the video's title and have gotten this far... Oh, I got two and one. That almost never happens, because there's, like, a soft lock-on. Oh, this is the tornado gun. It can hit multiple enemies. It doesn't deal a lot of damage, but it looks cool. Shooting a tornado at your enemies looks cool, and I like it. So I don't... It do, doesn't bother me that it doesn't deal very much damage. Anyway, anyone who's still here and is upset with the title... I like the title. I, I, I really like this thing that... That, uh... That old TV shows used to do, where they would stick the movie on something that's essentially just a really extended episode plot. So, that's what this is. And in order to to be feature length, you just have to be 40 minutes long, okay? So, this is a movie, even if it stops at 40 minutes. You figure something called Playable Passion, the movie might have, like, uh, something... Like, like, it would really explore the character of Playable Passion and what it means and what the channel's been all about up to this point. But it just introduces, like, a new character that's vaguely similar to the characters you're familiar with and they just spend the entire time in this one setting and it's just kind of not what you expected out of a feature-length Playable Passion film. But you, you have to deal with it, you know? The, you can leave the theater if you want. You can downvote it on on uh, your film review platform of choice. But you, you have to accept the fact that the movie just isn't what you expected it to be. Like, no amount of complaining about it is going to make the movie not what it is. And what's most important, really, is, is, that, uh, is that the movie is what, is what the people who made it wanted it to be. It, it's a little sad if it doesn't make other people happy. And you're totally allowed to complain about it. I, I, I encourage that. Critical thinking is valuable. But the artistic vision will not be compromised. I love this room because you can just jump all over it with Amy and do a completely inconsequential sequence break. It's ultimately meaningless because you have to go back down and do it the right way afterward. But I still, I still like that you can climb up these boxes with Amy. It's nice. And now we got to pull the tubes together after we get Knuckles up here. The way the AI follows you leaves some things to be desired. Sometimes the AI doesn't do a great job at, at sticking with you. And sometimes the AI will teleport right next to you when you don't want them there. Or during a section they're not supposed to be available for. And it's strange. It makes the game seem cheap. There's a lot of things about this game that make it seem cheap, even though I don't think it is. It's not the prettiest looking game. The fact that you can't fail it at all, uh, that really seems to bother some people and adds to, to it feeling cheap. It doesn't make it feel cheaper for me, but... Uh, you can softlock yourself in a few, a few locations. It's kind of hard to softlock yourself, but it's possible. And someone probably did it by accident. Because I'm, I'm sure a lot of people did play this game. Like 500,000 people is still a lot of people. 
I know not all of them played it, but like at least a hundred thousand people had to play this game, right? I'm sure some of them got soft locked in those in those places. It's nowhere near as bad as Sonic 06, though. Spoken as someone who plays Sonic 06 once a year, just for fun. Uh, this is not nearly as bad as Sonic 06. Sonic 06 puts up a fight when you try to play it. You cannot play Sonic 06 like a normal game. The glitches are right in your face. It's just pretty much impossible to get a normal game experience out of Sonic 06. But with this game, you can get a normal game experience almost 100% of the time. Then a triple toe spin, and then down, and boom, that's how we do it. Scanning life forms. Negative for blue hedgehog. But positive for red echidna. Red echidna irrelevant. Oh. What do you want with the blue hedgehog? Information classified. Come on! Peer pressure acknowledged. Acquiescing in three, two, Blue Hedgehog is necessary to stop Lyric. Disclose Hedgehog location immediately. Uh, how do we know we can trust you enough to tell you that Sonic and Tails are a few levels down? What? I feel like Knuckles is kind of a ditz, but later in the game it gets to the point where he can't even form sentences properly sometimes and it's just really painful to watch and listen to in general in this game the characters talk a lot so i guess when the characters talk as much as they do in this game it's easy to make them say things that aren't nice and aren't appeal oh time for hydro dashing so this is where you're first introduced to the concept of Hydro Dashing, which, as you're seeing, is running on water. And after you unlock it in this level, you can use it in the open world. There are places in Cliff's excavation site, the hub world we were at, where you can use Hydro Dashing, dashing to reach various collectibles and shortcuts. But you can't use it before you use it in this level. So, I mean... That's kind of cool, right? You go to a new location, you learn how to run on water, and then you go back to the open world, and you can get more collectibles by running on water. It's pretty normal progression. There's not a lot of it in this game, but it's nice. I'm gonna break all these husks before the snakes have a chance to get inside them. So Sonic is definitely my favorite character to do combat with, because he has his homing attack and his spin dash. And the homing attack and spin dash are just, they add so much more variance to his moveset. Variance that the other characters don't have. And it's just not as appealing to play as the others for that reason. It's kind of it's kind of like a friend or foe a little bit, but in friend or foe, there's appeal to playing as the other characters because you only have to play, for him for one, play with them for one stage in friend or foe. And then you can just switch to another one. But you only get the four characters in this. There's like 19 characters in Friend or Foe. Spider-Man Friend or Foe, I mean. Still referring to Spider-Man. Not any other video game called Friend or Foe, of which I'm sure there are many. But yeah, the, the fact that his homing attack is not only in this game, but you can use it for combat, that was always going to make Sonic my favorite to play with. I also just, in general, like moving around as Sonic because of his spin dash. He's the fastest character, which is to be expected. I like his jump arc and spin dashing a lot more than everyone else's. When I played this with my brother, my brother didn't seem to have a great time. Oh, I got something stuck in my throat. My brother didn't seem to have a great time, but that might have been because I was the one playing as Sonic. Maybe if he were playing as Sonic, he would have had a better time. Or maybe he didn't just like, he just didn't like the game. Which is fine. Like, a lot of people don't seem to like this game, and that's okay. I just do happen to like it. And I think it's okay. I think it's a pretty okay game. Like, from what you've seen so far, at least, does anything about the game really stand out as awful? Or does it just seem kind of middle of the road? Because I think it's more middle of the road. Personally. There just isn't nearly enough technically wrong with the game. 
Oh yeah, I should mention you can't fail the Hydra dashing segments either. When I said there's no failure state or getting sent back to checkpoints for anything but the speed sections, I meant this too. You actually don't have to go fast during Hydra dashing either. You can walk through the entire Hydra dash section. You just have to hold down on the control stick and your character will slow to a walk and they'll be walking on water instead of running on water. Uh, you might not have figured that by looking at this, but it is true. But I still like Hydra dashing. It changes the physics of movement. It gives you new obstacles to avoid. It's variety. But you don't turn down variety in a 3D platformer. Especially, especially this one, because a lot of people really did not seem to like the, uh, like the basic platforming mechanics in this one. I think they're fine. But this game is also six to eight hours, six hours for me, but I've played it before. So I'm going to say like maybe eight or nine hours for someone playing it the first time. And I think short and sweet is a good way to go with most games. I really do. I like games that are in the two to five hour range. When, it, when a game goes over 10 hours or even when it's just at 10 hours, I can get kind of exhausted. I didn't really with this one, but that's because there was a lot surrounding this one that was, that was more pressing. Like normally I might be like, oh, this game's taking forever because 10 hours is a long time to play one game to me. Uh, play, play one game without finishing it, I mean. I, I would still play this game again. It's not like I, I hate it. I just wanted to get to the ending. But it, it, it wasn't really that bothersome to me that this game was longer than most I play. Because I was... Rec oh, the slappy hand. One hit kills any enemy. I wasted it on that snake. But it can one hit kill any enemy, even many bosses. It's kind of nuts. I love it. You only get three uses out of it, but that's because it's so powerful. But there were, like I was saying, there were other things to worry about when I was recording this one, besides just whether I personally was having a good time, which I was, but, like, I was behind on my work uploading long plays. Some of my files kept getting corrupted. I had to re-record this game three times, basically. It was stressful. Uh, so, getting tired of the game was not a concern. It just It's just something that had had to be done. I could not afford to get tired of the game. With all the various things going wrong with my body, July was not a great month, and I was behind on several things, relationship and work-wise. But it, it did give me a chance to revisit Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. There we go. I love the slappy hand. And, uh... I still get, like, comments on my old videos regularly. And that's nice. And sometimes my, one of my boyfriends messages me. And they're like, hey, I really like this video. Or I like when you're introspective in your videos. Those are my favorite. And that's always nice. It's, it's nice to have my existence acknowledged and to have a place to express my existence. So I didn't want to just, like, give up on this channel. I still have things I want to say about stuff. I think we're near the boss fight. I think. This level also has my favorite boss fight. Another reason why it's my favorite. You know, I said one of my boyfriends back there, I should really stop doing this thing that I used to do. Uh, when I was just savvy, where I didn't actually mention the people that that were important to me by name, uh, I can at least use their internet names. Like, the boyfriend who felt really, like, happy watching my introspective videos, his name is Mint. There's no reason I can't just call him Mint. I really didn't see that coming. Scanning life forms. Hedgehog and Fox confirmed. It is agreeable to see you both once again. Why does everybody keep saying that? Who are you? I am Maya. Long ago, I rebelled against my creator, Lyric, and helped imprison him. Now, a thousand years later, he has returned. We know that. We're looking for the crystals to stop him. Processing. There is a map that reveals the location of all the crystals. Where is it? Not where. When. 
It disappeared long ago. But this machine can transport you to a time before it vanished. Let's go! Facility power is non-functional. Generator requires reactivation. Location is... up there. Maya's going to help us with the crystals, but we need the generator up and running. We're on it! Me too! Yeah, this level's a pretty long one. Like I said, sometimes you get those uh, those 15-minute levels, sometimes you get the 40-minute levels. Look, it's doing the thing again where it's panning up, and it's like you got a platform up there. And I love these. Still love them. There's also a lot of collectibles in this room. I just see a room like this, and I'm like, yes, Absolutely. This is why I bought the game. Keep going up and don't look speaking down. of uh, speaking of things titled title the movie, uh, I watched a, a title the movie movie. It was Hey Arnold the movie. I watched it because uh, a close friend of mine, Dulcet, linked me a video where someone was reviewing Hey Arnold the movie, and the person reviewing the movie had interesting thoughts. But they didn't actually tell me what fucking happened in the movie to any meaningful degree. And they didn't seem to go any particular order. The, the, there was, like, no uh, explanation as to how the characters got where they were or what was going on for context. So I watched the movie for context. And I actually wound up really liking the movie. It's been a long time since I've watched Hey Arnold proper. But I loved the movie. Uh, it was very cheeky. There was nice dialogue in it. The characters were... I, they they weren't idiots. I really like when a uh, when fictional media doesn't treat small children like idiots. I shouldn't say small children. I'm I'm not sure nine and ten is small children. I think that's just children. But that's how old they are, and they're not idiots. I like that. Like there are probably nine to ten year olds smarter than me. They may not have the same life experience, but I have no doubt that there's got to be one that's smarter than me out there somewhere. And we shouldn't treat children like they're idiots. It, it's not It's not great practice. It, it makes children have a difficult time trusting adults, speaking from experience. And you know, we're 47 minutes into this movie, so I think it's about time to establish the theme. I know usually you do that earlier in the movie, but sometimes things don't turn out the way you want. Alright, let's say the theme of this movie is, uh, life is, life is complicated. There's a lot going on. I don't know what's wrong with with my body. I am I am worried that I'm in constant pain and sometimes I poop I poop blood. That's always a concern even if you get more used to it over time. And you know, maybe my mouth tastes a little bit like blood right now. And uh maybe my eyes are hurting in a very similar way to the last time I had optic neurosis, neuritis, neurite I think it's optic neuritis. Neurosis is a very different thing, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to type that in. You know what, uh, my browser's not cooperating. So we'll, we'll just call it optic neuritis. And there have been so many doctor's visits, and nobody knows quite what's wrong, and you've taken, I've taken, uh, like 15 bottles of medicine. I have them all stored uh, for later, so I can show them to people to be like, look at how much medicine I took, just as like a fun little, a fun little fact, because I'm going to see my family sometime, and I'm going to show them what I've been up to by dumping all the pills out. And, and I think they'll, uh, I'll get a good reaction. But, you know, what am I going to do? Am I just going to stop recording this video? No, I, I've already explored the options available to me. And uh, this seems to be the best one, what I'm doing right now. That doesn't mean that it's going to fix it. That doesn't mean anyone knows what's wrong. But life can't just stop because I, I've got problems. Portal activating. Setting coordinates. Upon completion, I will send you through. Not so fast, Sonic. Shadow? What are you doing here? Not a great time, Shadow. I'm a little busy saving the world. Saving the world? You? Don't make me laugh. You're weak. And you know what makes you weak? Your loyalty to your pathetic friends. You're not going through that portal. I'm gonna show you just how weak you are. 
There's a lot of questionable dialogue in this game, but I think Shadow's appearance and his dialogue immediately after showing up really take the cake. You have no context for who Shadow is, why he's here. He just immediately says, Sonic, your friendship is what's dragging you down. And then you fucking fight. And then he appears one more time at the end of the game. Again, without any context as to who he is or what he's doing. It's, it's kind of great. Anyway, the boss fight itself is fine. Shadow has an attack phase where he's glowing and he can't be hurt. And then after his attack phase, he's vulnerable so you can wail on him for a little bit. It's nothing outstanding, but his attacks are fun to look at. There's a variety of locations you fight in. It's the most dynamic of the battles, for sure, aside from maybe the one where you're hurling missiles at Eggman, but that one's also not fun. This, this is the most fun boss fight, I think. But yeah, uh, life's complicated. It isn't always like a movie. And sometimes those are the movies you should watch. The ones about how things are complicated. But people keep... People keep living anyway. You know? Like, this isn't... This probably isn't normal YouTube content. Or what people usually use YouTube for. But I think what I'm doing here... Fits really well with... With the name of the website. It's YouTube. It's it's about it's about you and me, and and our lives. But in spite of everything going on, and how it's not great, you know I'm at peace with who I am now. And I feel like things are going in a good direction as far as my uh, my agency is concerned. I think I'm pushing things in the proper direction. What my body thinks is up, what the rest of the world thinks is up, I don't know. That's really none of my business. There's only so much I can do about that. But I think I'm taking things in the proper direction. You guys, uh, I'll hang in there too, alright? Assuming anyone made it here. Uh, like, I hope that me being open about everything and just absolutely laying who I am bare for everyone, that... You know, maybe you feel a little better about yourself and realize that other people are complicated and have problems and aren't perfect, too. I wonder if I can, like, get this film submitted to Rotten Tomatoes or some shit.